You know, there are a lot of Nintendo Switch ports that I would like to happen, like the Metroid Prime Trilogy, which I'm still holding out for that. The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, of course. Twilight Princess would also be cool, since I've never played it. Conker's Bad Fur Day would be nice as well. Hey, maybe even an F-Zero port for you F-Zero fans. There are a ton more, but this is just some of them that I would like. What games would you like have ported to the Nintendo Switch? Hey guys, it's Rob here, and welcome back to the Robo Chan Show, where we cover the latest gaming news, leaks, and rumors from Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo in 2020 and beyond. If you want to be kept up on the latest gaming news, make sure you click that red subscribe button below this video and that notification bell so you know when I upload. And if you're interested, I have a Patreon, which link to that will be in the pinned comment along with my Twitter account. In this video, we are going to talk about Nintendo Switch ports and why I personally think that they have a place on the Nintendo Switch. I'll share some of my problems with them and some of the positives of them as well, and the reason why I think the games benefit to being on the Nintendo Switch rather than playing through emulation or maybe on the older consoles. If you enjoy this video, leave a like, it helps the video reach more viewers and shares help as well. And if you want to follow me on Twitter and help me reach my goal of 600 followers, you can follow me at RoboRob93. Without further delay, let's get to the video. So we are closing in on the Nintendo Switch release of The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, and now I think is a perfect time to talk about Nintendo Switch ports. Now there has been a lot of talk on Twitter and in my own comment section between people who don't want Nintendo Switch ports and others who do. They have thrown some pretty good arguments out, mostly stemming from the way Nintendo treats these Nintendo Switch ports when on the side of not wanting the ports, or at the very least not liking the way Nintendo is going about them. The side I'm on is the side that enjoys ports of these older games, games that I've played in the past like the Super Mario Mario 35th games with Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, and Super Mario Galaxy. I like that I can play these games and not have to jump through hoops and run into trouble to play these Mario games, and the same goes for the Wii U ports. Now some will say, well why don't you just emulate them on Dolphin or Project 64? You can even play them at 8K. We have all probably heard this or seen this on Twitter or a comment in the comment section of a YouTube channel at one point in time. And to some extent they do have a point, but there are some big pros for emulators and there are some big Big cons. While emulation is nice and can be a great way for Super Nintendo games and older consoles, the ones that are more hefty on the PC sometimes don't work well. For instance, right now I'm working on a big animation review for The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker in 2021 and I don't own a Wii U. So naturally I chose the emulator Dolphin and in my experience emulating Wind Waker has been a bit of a pain in the butt. The upscale and textures is nice and makes for a clean picture, but I've also run into massive frame rate problems, crashes, and audio bugs. This made me have to reset Dolphin, delete files, and download it again. This is a massive negative for anyone who just wants to sit down and play The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker or any game that's going to be ported to the Nintendo Switch. Now of course not all games play this way, but so far I've run into a lot of problems. Not only in this, but in DD Kong Racing 2, there's a lot of frame rate problems in that on the Nintendo 64 emulator. Mario in the Thousand Year Door seems to glitch out and parts of the game don't even load in. There are a lot of problems with emulation and I just want to play these games. It would be much better to pop in the cartridge and just select the game and play it. No lagging, no frame rate problems, nothing. This is why I think there is so much excitement or was so much excitement around the 35th anniversary games like Twilight Princess, The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, Ocarina of Time, and so on coming to Nintendo Switch. Now of course not all of those were coming to Nintendo Switch or were rumored, but you guys get my point. The idea of playing these older games at better resolutions and better frame rates and not having to go through the headache of emulation or buying older consoles. And here are some Something I want you guys to remember, especially when it comes to Wind Waker HD and even the original release of Twilight Princess. These consoles didn't sell a lot, so saying that just buy another Wii U or just buy another GameCube isn't really always the option for the person who wants to play these games. Sometimes these consoles cost a lot of money specifically because they are so old. And even if I were to say, okay, I'll buy a Wii U, then you have to pay for the Wii U, which I mean, look at these prices, they're pretty insane. I mean, the new Nintendo Switch OLED was just announced and it's 350 50 and this costs over $400? Come on. You might as well just buy our original Nintendo Switch, save some money, and have Nintendo port the games to the Nintendo Switch and play it on there. Now you could probably find one for a cheaper price, but that's even if it works in the first place, and how long is it going to work for as well? I mean, these games did come out 20 years ago, and to my knowledge anyways, the Wii U wasn't Blu-ray. So even if you did manage to get a Wii U in very good condition and didn't cost an arm and a leg, who's to say that the Wind Waker HD disc or whatever game you're trying to play is not 
all scratched up. And speaking of age, with the Nintendo Switch popularity and how massive it is and how massive the install base is, the ages range from 4 tech to 90 years old. There is a lot of people who haven't played the Zelda games, the old Donkey Kong games, and other Nintendo games. Especially if you're a kid or a teenager and don't know anything about emulation or don't have the money to buy a new console but you already own a Nintendo Switch. Nintendo porting something like The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker is good for those people. Which by the way, if you're looking for a small glimpse of hope of the Zelda 35th anniversary games coming to Nintendo Switch, click the top right corner of this video. But anyways, when speaking of owning a Nintendo Switch, there are some huge benefits to having these ports on the Nintendo Switch. The first one is pretty obvious, portability. This is one of the main driving factors for me personally when it comes to Nintendo Switch ports. Aside from the reasons before this, of course. Having the ability to play these anywhere on a car trip or at the doctor's office or when you're just waiting around. It's fantastic and I love it and that's one of the big things that I love about Nintendo Switch and I think it's one of the things that made the Nintendo Switch sell so well. Other benefits of porting games to the Nintendo Switch from older consoles are an update of controls or quality of life features as seen in the new trailer for the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Something that wouldn't be possible without the Wii U ports unless you're emulating that is which again has its up and downs. Now Nintendo Switch ports are not perfect let's be honest here. I think prime example is the Super Mario 35th anniversary games. Mario 64 to be exact. While it is an upgrade from the Nintendo 64 version, we have seen better things done via emulation. And I think this is where one of the positives come from emulation is the automatic upscaling that a lot of these emulators do. And I'm not talking about 4K visuals or 8K visuals, I'm just talking about the general upgrades in resolution and clarity in their picture. When you consider that Nintendo did use emulators to emulate these games for these ports, it makes you wonder why Nintendo didn't spruce up these games even more when you can clearly get more out of these ports. I mean, when you look at other ports that other companies have done, like the Mass Effect trilogy, which even though I hate EA to <laughs> an insane degree, you can definitely say that yeah, this is definitely an upgrade over the older games. In some ways, there are some little odd choices here and there in the Mass Effect trilogy, but overall it is a definite improvement. And this is really the one time I'd side with the crowd who says that Nintendo isn't doing the best job in some way, shape, or form with these Nintendo Switch ports. And that's putting it nicely. With that being said, I still do prefer the Mario 3D collection over emulation due to the problems that can arise during emulation. Overall, I do like Nintendo Switch ports and I want them on the system. I want the Zelda 35th anniversary games, I want the older Donkey Kong games, I want heck even Glover 64. I would love that or even Quest 64. Wow, I'm really pulling <laughs> the bottom barrel of the Nintendo 64 games right now, but you guys get my point. Nintendo Switch ports for me are a way to essentially play these games without having to spend extra money on a new console or run into troubles via emulation. And while there are some benefits to emulation, I think it's better to play ports of those games in most cases. I have heard that ports of like the Final Fantasy games can get a bit wonky here and there depending on what platform you're playing on. And while these do have their benefits, the ease of access to these Nintendo Switch ports, especially for the younger crowd, is a huge plus when trying to play older games. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, maybe everything I said in this video is dumb, who really knows? This is just the stuff that's been on my mind personally with these other 35th anniversary stuff happening at E3, so that's been stuck in my mind for the past couple weeks. And of course, the Nintendo Switch port of Skyward Sword coming out soon too as well. But those are just my thoughts on the Nintendo Switch ports, why I love them over emulation, and why I want them on the Nintendo Switch. What do you guys think? Tell me your thoughts in the comment section below, and if you enjoyed this video, of course subscribe for more if you want to, or don't if you don't want to. And if you found some enjoyment in this video, make sure you leave a like, and of course share it on Twitter or Facebook or whatever platform you prefer. Thanks for watching guys, and remember, stay safe, stay charged, and have a good one.